High Thumos, welcome back. Today, we're talking about living the High Thumos lifestyle. I want you guys to understand what it is because it's crucial to living the best life. Now, when I say High Thumos, I started saying this because I wanted to capture a way that I was feeling. I wanted to sort of capture an energy, remind you of like an energy, a fire in the belly, a way that you feel strong. It's, it's this virility, this, uh, you know... It's like, man, you can just do it. You know what I mean when I say it? And uh, how do we feel that? That's what I want this video to be about. How do we actually feel it? Well, I've been constantly writing about how I feel for years. And I started when I was like, I think 21, I would just start writing. Like every time I had a good day, I would write down what I did to have a good day. And I would try to dissect it. I was like, well, what, what happened? Like, where was I? How did the environment look? What did I eat? Did I, did I talk to a bunch of people? Was I really social? Did I have a bunch of water or whatnot? You know, I'd always try to do it. And man, it was like the best thing. It's one of the reasons I started this channel. To share with you the, the ideas and the tips that helped me feel that. And I've realized that as I get older, it's, it's pretty much just high T. Like high test. And as a man, you have more testosterone than women. It's really like what makes us men. It's what makes us strong and grow more muscle. It's what makes your voice. It's what makes the hair grow. It's what, you know, the hair on the back of your neck. You know, some of us get it here. Some of us don't. Some of us have our hairlines receding and stuff. And the testosterone is what makes you a man, okay? And when we do not have that, this is what it makes life feel like. A low thumos life is you have a brain fog and it feels like you're going through a swamp. Like you're trying to walk through a swamp. And your brain feels like that too. You're going through a swamp when you think it's like murky. High T, really being a healthy man and filled with this virility is going to make you feel like you're going, you know, life is tough. It's hard. You're going through a swamp, but you got like a huge, you know, leaf blower or one of those boats, you know, that just ride on the swamps and you're just cruising, dude. It's, like, it's not life on easy mode, but things are easier. You don't have all of the anxieties that you have that, and that you hear about it and it's just like weird thinking. You kind of don't have that. Because I don't want to like make you too worried like, oh man, am I, am I high T today? Am I not high T? Don't think like that. I'm just telling you that we, you know, we should aim to be healthy and strong. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to share with you some stuff here. But get this right, man. When you feel like weak and afraid, if you've noticed that you're very scared when it comes to conflict, you tend to be more agreeable. It may be like the way you were raised and it's not bad to be agreeable. But if there is a time where you need to rise up and to say, hey, like, you know, you better stop treating me like that, man. And you need to tell someone, hey, step down. Well then, you know, that, that conflict comes naturally, I should say. It comes naturally. Look at the big animals. Like, they don't back down from each other. Like, they're going to stand up and meet each other eye to eye and face each other. The, the kings of the jungle, the big cats, the apes. So when you have this low test and you're living the low through most low test lifestyle, you're going to really feel weak and your energy is low, low vitality. You're not going to wake up with a heart on. You're not going to really have positivity radiating from your mentality. That's what, like, I'm trying to create this image. You can understand how it feels. It's a can do spirit. When you wake up in the morning, having this high through most lifestyle is like, I can do stuff. Like I'm going to radiate positivity. Just naturally it just comes out of you. You're not really on the forums or, you know, too concerned with all the spreading this negativity around because low T people usually do that. People that don't really feel that great low energy, they kind of continue to pump out low energy stuff. So higher energy, higher vibration, man, you're just like more of this positive. You can tell like this attitude, it, it contains gratefulness in it, it contains presence in it, it contains something that you want to have. And it's so worth being like it, it has a certain swagger to it. So, you know, it's just, that's what we want to be. And you can be that, but our environments and our lifestyle these days are really making us lower. 
Okay, so let's look at some stuff that has helped me personally and I've learned. And just so you know, I'm not like a health coach or a doctor. So, you know, I don't, some people are not going to agree with me and that's completely fine. But uh, hear me out. These are things that I've tried. Maybe just try it and see if it works for you. And then if it doesn't, just stop doing it. Especially when it's in the winter months, the vitamin D3 seems to really help me. Okay, I take vitamin D3, about 3,000 I use a day. I take fish oil, and when I run out of fish oil, or even as I'm taking fish oil, I'll eat fatty fish. I'll eat salmon, and I also have sardines that are uh, have a lot of omega-3s, okay? that This really helps. Magnesium. Now, these aren't magic pills, by the way, and you can function highly without it, but trust me. You want to eat healthy, and if you're missing out on your nutrients, then you want to start to supplement with them. Magnesium and zinc, critical role in testosterone production, okay? Magnesium, when I started taking, gave me this feeling of calmness, and I could just slow down. I could relax. Instead of being uptight, like shoulders raised, shallow breathing, I think I was maybe a little bit deficient in magnesium, okay? Uh, when it comes to exercise, we want to strength train. We want to try to lift weights. You know, we want to do heavy carries. You want to do, you want to lift weights over your head. You want to push weight. You want to push against it. And that is, that you can just naturally feel, especially when you work out your legs. And it's sad because a lot of guys are skipping on the legs. But when you do those heavy squats, man, you feel good. You're horny when you go home. Like you feel it. You feel a little bump. Uh, hit. Is also known to boost it. You can tell like when you do sprints, she's like 30 second sprints, 30 second rest, boom, and they do it again. Man, that really boosts it. So one thing I've noticed during this quarantine, I took about a week and a half off of lifting just completely, like nothing. And I realized that I was waking up in the morning and I had like more frequent morning wood. Honestly, waking up, boom, waking up in a tent, morning wood. And I think I might've been overtraining a bit because I just love training and then I sort of stopped and I realized wow like I was kind of overdoing it like I need to rest a little bit more so don't overtrain give yourself some recovery next one eat fat guys eat some fat I'm telling you cholesterol cholesterol and fat saturated fats are going to make more testosterone now here's where people the vegans are like no don't do that don't do that don't eat this and that's fine I'm not here to argue with you I'm sure there's vegans that have higher tests than me. But what I've noticed, try doing this. Like, if you were a meat eater, eat like a couple strips of bacon and some eggs, like four whole eggs in the morning, and some potatoes, and try that for a couple days and see if you are you feel like higher, like in your mental, in your spirit, like you feel the high thumos. So I really believe this is important. I'll have coconut oil just you know, a spoonful, go like this and then just swallow it. And I'll do that at night or in the morning. It doesn't matter. But getting that extra saturated fat. And a lot of people think this is bad for you, but just do your own research, man. I'm not here to, you know, go into the science of it. Chemicals these days, chemicals everywhere, hard to avoid. Like, especially plastic. Plastic has these chemicals that leach out into a lot of our stuff and can disrupt our testosterone production okay so i'm trying to actually transition a lot of my stuff you know i started using natural deodorant it works great um toothpaste you can get in like a glass jar toothpaste without all the fluoride and stuff but even just like keeping your food in glass containers and trying to eliminate a lot of the just toxins around you and not have these chemicals coming in again you know i said eat fat but Try not to eat a lot of sugar. We actually want to cut out sugar for the most part. We want to cut out a lot of trans fat, nasty fats, canola oil, vegetable oil, stuff like that. We want to just eliminate junk from our life. Eliminate junk because the junk kind of is like keeps the testosterone low. Add some vegetables in there like broccoli, some spinach. I know broccoli, they say, can help with keeping the estrogen down. So as men, we don't want the estrogen to be too high, right? Uh, so make sure you're eating some vegetables, but for the main part, it's not really complicated. You don't need to go on some insane diet. Just eat whole foods, whole foods that are minimally processed food, okay? And you'll be you'll be good and add some fat in there. Don't be afraid of some grass-fed butter or some olive oil or an avocado. 
and some some meat if you eat meat okay but sleep so important we got to be sleeping right sleeping right at least eight to seven hours i seem to do the best on eight and i find that i feel the best when i wake up at the same time every day and that's been hard for me honestly it's been hard for me because i end up i end up like getting caught up doing something at night and then i just i'm like okay well i gotta push my sleep back because i want eight hours but if I keep doing that, then, you know, what does that do to the, the mind, the mental? What does it do to my hormones? So going to sleep, getting at least seven, eight hours, and then waking up at the same time every day gets me going. Uh, this is a, something I want to tell you about. But last thing, eat garlic, man. Try the garlic. I've noticed that when I started eating a clove of garlic, you just smash it down. All right, this is super cool. Just smash it down and cut it up, mince it up. And take it in your hand, throw it back, and drink a glass of water. You're not going to stink. You're not going to smell like shit. Just do it at night. That way, when you wake up in the morning, there's no smell. Just brush your teeth, carry on with your day. All right? So the garlic is, it cuts colds in half, by the way. And this is proven. And it also increases blood flow, lowers uh, blood pressure. You just feel a, a sort of relaxation. I know a lot of people are against the whole garlic thing. They, they don't think it's good, but... I've only had good experience from it. Now, you don't have to take it every day, but a clove is not going to hurt you. I'm not asking you to eat a whole bulb of garlic. So, here we go. This is something I've realized when it comes to stress. Stress. I'm reading a book. It's called The Molecule of More. It's about dopamine, okay? Now, I've, I've sort of known this intuitively that there are times in my life where I'm really present. I'm present. I'm calm. My tempo is slow, and there's also times in my life where I'm focused on the future. I'm focused on grinding, I'm focused on learning, I'm getting ahead. This is like future focus, this is here and now, the present. And the, the thing that the book is saying is, like, your dopamine rewards you when you're present, when you're here and now. And there's also a feeling of the pursuit, the hunt, the chase. Uh, thinking of the future that we're motivated to go after stuff and when we're too much of just one of the other it can sort of discombobulate us if, if we're always present we're not getting anything done well then you know we're not really using the dopamine to achieve and to really dr have that driving force in life but if we're always forward thinking then that can stress us out and a lot of what I've realized is happening these days is as men, we're getting really stressed out. Our minds are always in the future. And I realized this when I would go on walks or when I would read a book or I would be with, say, some my girlfriends. I don't have multiple girlfriends, but, you know, the previous girlfriends. They would even point out like, hey, man, why are you so you seem uptight? You seem like you're not present. And it was true because. For a long time, I had put myself in this way of thinking where it was always forward. It was always like planning, calculating, thinking ahead. Um, and it was, it was stressful. You know, I, I was, it was hard to relax. Added the magnesium helped too. Added some magnesium citrate or glycinate. Uh, that really helped. But I realized it was, as I've got older that I've been able to calm down. And for now, when I'm going on the walks or I'm reading a book... Instead of reading the book and like kind of, you know how you read the book, you read a little bit and then you go and you think about some random stuff like the bills or you, your girl or like this and that. You're not actually sitting there being present reading the book. And so your mind has this constant stress and then that dopamine, that reward that help that you get from being present, the neurotransmitters that, you know, make you feel good, releases oxytocin, serotonin, you start feeling all these things when you're present. You don't really get that because you can't relax and be present. When you go on a walk, you know, think about when you go on a walk these days. A lot of us are quarantined going on walks. Are you constantly like forward thinking? Are you constantly listening to an audiobook? Or are you actually able to just like walk in the woods and be one with nature, be one with God and discover that presence? And when you can add a little bit of both to your life, it makes this really nice uh, like feeling, this state of flow. I've noticed, and you can sort of bring the present to the 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 future way of thinking the 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 work. When you work, you actually are bringing that presence to the work. When you're learning, you're bringing the presence to the work, and so this 
presence you want to start to cultivate in your life because it has this de-stressing, this de-stressing sort of effect. And also makes you feel really good and motivated and, and there's a power that lies within the presence. But most of us are so unused to, I should say, being present because our minds are so used to projecting forward into the future. Maybe it's from, you know, staying on here all day and we're like looking at our phones and then going here and we're checking everyone out and it's just like being able to relax and be calm. And that I've noticed when you have those moments of clarity in the presence, the de-stress, it brings on like this feeling of high thumos. It brings in the fire. It reminds you of what's important, what's essential. How am I getting off track? Where am I going? And you'll notice like a lot of like creative insight comes about when you're present and you're calm and you, it's like a natural motivation that you get just by being alive, being, being a human. And if you want to know more about the here and now, you can read this book, The Molecule of More. It's by David Lieberman. Someone recommended it to me recently. Thank you for that. But if you want to know kind of how that here and now uh, feels like when you, that good feeling, try meditating for about 10 to 15 minutes, and you'll notice that you just feel kind of happy for no reason. Like once your mind gets away from the future, and maybe away from the past too, and you're not no you're no longer caught up in the stream of thoughts, and you can relax. Well, then, what happens is you kind of have this happiness that arises out of the present moment. And it's very calming. It's very soothing. It's like rejuvenating. It feels like you're being like cleansed. You're being baptized. Same thing when you're in prayer. You're praying. You're kind of just being. You like, or when you're reading a book, and you hit that. You know, we're reading 25 pages a day and you hit that state of just immersion and, and flow where you're not thinking about anything else. You're letting, you're being there with the book, the story, and you get this calm feeling that just energizes your soul. It's amazing. And when you go on walks in the forest and you can sort of, like, it's like everything becomes just one. And that's no hippie talk. Like, I'm serious. I went on a walk the other day and I'm just walking and like, Man, like everything's just like in flow, in flow. You just, it's not you and in the woods. It's just like you're, you are <laughs> there. It's like everything is together. It's everything's vibrating together. It's that feeling. But if you can bring that into your life, it is definitely powerful, definitely a, a cool way to live. And I think that many of us, again, with our free time, we're, we're not doing stuff that actually is going to make us happy. And most of the things that we're allowing into our life and our environment are not things that were made to make us happy. They are things that were made to get us addicted and to come back for more, 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 to use this future, this dopamine, like more, 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 um, more entertainment, more junk, more sugar, more this, more that. And we're always pursuing that instead of actually sitting down in here and now and in discovering that rewarding feeling that comes from there and all the other positive aspects. But it, it, it's, uh, yeah, all of that stuff is not going to make you happy and it's going to waste time. And if you're constantly consumed with all of this stuff, well, then you, you end up frittering away your time and you have very little to show for it. It was in the book Flow by Mahali Csikszentmihalyi. He said that, you know, a lot of us, when it comes to our free time, we need to be careful and realize that a lot of the stuff in the that the world has to offer isn't designed to actually give you a feeling of happiness. It's designed to string you along. And, and then once it's done, it leaves you unfulfilled. And so when you go after things that are fulfilling, such as relationships, like call, like friendship, building something, creating an art, creating, like getting better at something, becoming more, uh, and also getting closer to God, getting closer with nature, getting closer with the presence, that can really be a fulfilling life. And you actually feel it. You'll feel it. So that's really what I have to say, the high through most lifestyle. I hope you can understand. If you have any questions, please let me know. But just know that, you know, as men, we are supposed to have the, the, the high T. And when it's low, it makes life hard, man. And it's hard to understand this because... 
you know when like you have a really motivating day you're super motivated, you're super pumped, you're like, man, wow, that's awesome, I wanna feel like this all the time. Well, you know, your body's making testosterone at night, and you wake up and you feel it, and then when that goes away, maybe the next day you're like, man, why do I feel like complete junk? Why am I so up and down? Well, look at the previous day's action. Look at the imprint it left on today's, you know, on you today. And then uh, realize, you know, it's, it's mainly healthy living. We wanna live healthy, all right? Want to live healthy. Uh, before I go, I'm going to tell you guys, I am doing this for the very first time. I'm doing a challenge called the ARK Challenge. A-R-K, the ARK. 30-day challenge, 30 days and 30 nights. And I'm only going to do this once a year. One time a year, it's one month. I'm going to do it now in about five days. Okay, April 15th, I believe. So a little bit more. It's going to be a 30 day challenge and it's going to be one of the most extreme challenges that I've ever done. Honestly, I'm a little bit nervous myself and because I've never done something so extreme. It's not so extreme as like, um, like painful, but more of it's a complete shift, a paradigm shift from what I'm used to. And, I, and I've designed it all the things that I want to do that I know is going to help me live this life, the high T, the high thumos lifestyle. And it's like a complete reset, a complete dopamine reset. Um, it's a complete reset in just focus and, and actually tuning into this clarity more and less of this because I find myself getting caught up in this and I know that I need to return here and really cover this and I can go from there. So it's like that almost how they do in some religions like where they take a month out, or maybe you're Catholic or you're Muslim and you do the Ramadan or you do the Lent. It's it's giving up some stuff for a month, 30 days, 30 nights, and really focusing and getting refreshing the system, getting the motivation back, getting the high T up, living that high thumos lifestyle by you know conjuring up that fire in the belly. And I'm super pumped to do it, okay? But I'm only going to do this once every year. This is the ARC challenge. Um, and then probably after this year, I'll start it on January 1st, all right? It'll be January 1st of every year, and probably at the end, we'll all come together. But I don't really have the means to do that now, like set up a, a camp where everyone can come, so I'm just going to do a live video call at the end of the 30 days, we'll all meet up. But, you know, I expect you, if you're going to do this, that you give it your all, and if you fail, then you acknowledge that you fail, and that's okay. All right, but it's going to be something that we challenge each other. We're going to have a group. Everyone's going to hold themselves accountable, and we're going to, you know, uh, halfway through, we're going to do a live talk, see how everyone's doing, kind of what's the struggle, what are we dealing with mentally, and uh, that's really it. It's going to be a 30-day challenge once a year. I'm super pumped. We're going to get started April 15th. So if you're interested, check it out down below. I set up a page, uh, and you could just. See it there. See if you want to be a part of this. It's not for everyone, all right? I know some people are fathers, they're busy, you got this and that going on. Maybe you can't. But if you have the time to really, and you want to get focused, and you just feel like something's off, this could be it. This could be what you need to reset everything, okay? And really get that motivation to go and, and accomplish. So let's get it. Check out the ARC Challenge, and we're going to get started soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below what it is that you are doing in your life that, that gives you that energy, all right? And I'll see you soon. Peace.